Hi everyone and welcome to this live global product preview. I'm Clayton Pattison. And I am John Korn. Now before we get started, uh, this live stream, uh, if any of you missed it or have any technical problems, we're going to have a high quality download uh, up on our Facebook and on our YouTube channel. Uh, so you can view it later. And uh, since this is live television, I'll ask that you bear with us in case we have any issues. Uh, hopefully we shouldn't, but just remember it's live television. So, Johnny, take it away. So now, over the next hour or so, we're going to introduce a brand new TZ Touch 3 MFD display. And following a reintroduction uh, we did earlier this year on a TZ Touch 3 product line. Mm -hmm. right? And we're going to talk about the network sensors that are compatible. And Clayton's going to take us on a quick tour on, on the user interface, which we like to call a UI, mm -hmm. on how easy it is to operate a TZ Touch 3 MFD display. Mm -hmm. right, so just to give you guys a heads up, at the end of this <coughs> broadcast, we're going to have a live Q&A session. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to submit those at any time during the live broadcast. Uh, we'll go through those questions, and then we're going to uh, answer some of them uh, live on air. So now before we get started, when we introduced uh, TZ Touch 3, we also asked, invited you to go on a power trip with Furuno, which includes the new high power uh, NXT solid state radar antennas and the new DIFF amp three, uh, 2 and 3 kilowatt at True Echo Chirp sounder amplifier. So since the introduction on mm -hmm. TZ Touch 3, uh, and as far back as TZ Touch 2, mm -hmm. we got a lot of feedback from our dealers and customers that we need a smaller MFD display. Yeah, that was a popular one, right? And we delivered. Mm -hmm. Today, we are very excited to introduce the newest member of the TZ Touch 3 family, mm -hmm. which is the TZ T9F. So the TZ T9F is perfect <coughs> for many you know, uh, applications, mm -hmm. but on one hand, it's perfect for a small boat solutions. Mm -hmm. So the TZT9F is a 9-inch IPS LCD display. With, it comes with a bracket and knobs. Mm -hmm. It has a built-in GPS, mm -hmm. built-in true echo chirp, built-in charts throughout the Americas, mm -hmm. and we preloaded charts that you can purchase unlock codes for, such as CMAP, Navionics, and Seymour. It also has uh, the hybrid control system built into it as well. So if you're out there in the big water, you know, bouncing around, you have an option to use your, the roto key. Mm -hmm. So, and even though it's a smaller nine-inch display, mm -hmm. it has that quad-core processor, mm -hmm. that two gigabyte of RAM memory to give you that fast, instant touch response. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, it's also perfect for a large boat application. So, you know, Fruno historically has kind of been more of a large boat kind of company. Uh, so this will, the TZT9F will work perfect in a multi-station system. It's perfect for applications on a, uh, a Tuna Tower or a Flying Bridge. Uh, it's got that nice bright display, so it's perfect for a cockpit or a back deck mount. Uh, and it'll fit where a, a larger display just won't. So for example, if you have, don't have room for the TZT16F or even the 12F, the TZT9F is the perfect solution. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned um, the UI on the, our TZ Touch 3 MFD mm -hmm. displays and how easy it is, it is to use. Mm -hmm. So Clayton, can you show the viewers out there how easy to operate a TZ Touch 3? Yeah, of course. So since the introduction of TZ Touch, uh, the concept has always been touch and go, which enables the user to customize their experience. So if I touch on the screen here, something intuitive is going to happen much like a smartphone. So that gives me the ability to do a single finger pan, two finger pinch and zoom, and then a number of other uh, two finger touch gestures that enabled me to customize my experience. Uh, one of the most important things, and something you'll use a lot, are the edge swipe menus. So under each edge of the screen, we have a, a, a different edge swipe menu. So if I swipe down from the top, which is our one we're gonna use the most, com the most of the time, is where we can access our quick pages. So we can put in any of the hot pages that we've created or one's presets that we'd like for quick access to make things move a lot smoother. Now if I edge swipe in from the right, that's going to give me my navigation tools. If I edge swipe in from the left, that's going to give me my data box information. 
Uh, right now I've got the chart plotter selected for control, so it's going to give me all the basics on the chart plotter, position, course, speed, uh, heading, so forth. But these are going to change depending on what mode that I'm in. So for example, if I touch on the control, switch control to the radar, now I get this contextual menu here that gives me access to gain, C, and rain clutter, so that it's easy to find and it's not hidden anywhere. And the last one is the uh, layers menu, which is the edge swipe up from the bottom. Now this is also going to give me different choices depending on what mode I am from fish finder, chart plotter, and radar. Uh, what also goes along with that is the ability to change font size. And that's something, you know, we mentioned that we listened to our customer's input. Uh, and that was something that a lot of people asked for. Uh, so we give you the ability to change the uh, format size from smallest to largest, which we also affectionately call old man mode. Which some of us already get there. Well, easy there, Turbo, because <laughs> I'm older than you are. So I have it set to large right now, to the old man mode. Uh, and we can see we've got these nice large uh, presentation numbers here on the data box menu, uh, which is perfect. So if you uh, just want a nice big presentation, or if you're uh, out on the back deck and the display's in the pile house, you can still see what's going on. Well, a better solution for that, mm -hmm. if you're in the back deck and you're trying to look at it, mm -hmm. is to purchase the TZT9F <laughs> and put That's it in right. the back deck. You have a good point. You can you put it in the network. Uh, now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, building a page because that's a big part of customizing your experience uh, and the user interface. So on TZ Touch 2, we were able to do a three-way split uh, with TZ Touch 3. Now we can do a four-way or a quad screen. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go here to home. Uh, we're going to scroll over here to this white plus icon and we're going to touch on that and that's going to give us the ability to build a page. Now on the left-hand side, I have all of my different uh, ways of splitting up the screen. So we're going to choose the quad screen. And then over on the right, we have all the different choices of the icons that we can put in those boxes, including the new icons for the new Navnet Command Center, uh, which we'll touch on in a uh, future technology showcase. For right now, though, we're just going to stick with the basics. So I'm going to put the plotter down here in the, uh, down here in the bottom. Uh, we're going to put the radar up here in the, up here. Let's put the fish finder over here, and let's put an engine gauge in there just for, just for grins. So if we touch on the green check mark, it's going to save that page, and then it's going to open it for us. So now we have our newly built quad page, and one of the neat things that we can do with the two finger touch gestures mm -hmm. is we can actually set it up to expand or contract various boxes, various screens. So if I, for example, if I do a two finger touch on the radar, It'll bring up my full screen radar. I can, you know, zoom in and zoom out and move things around and look at whatever I need to do. And then when I'm done, I can two finger touch and I can put it back in the corner. I can do the same thing on the plotter. I can two finger touch and expand the chart plotter. You know, we can zoom in, we can look at our AIS targets, we can plot in a bunch of routes, we can make waypoints, we can do whatever we need to do. And then simply two finger touch and put it back. It's very simple. It know. is. It's super easy. It's just as easy as using your smartphone. It is. It's exactly like using a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So, Clayton, if you, after you're building a quad uh, mm -hmm. page, mm -hmm. how do you save it? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, so, like we did with the quick pages at the beginning with the top edge swipe, uh, much like an old car stereo where you can save your favorite radio station as a preset, we can do the same thing with the quick pages. So, if I, I have this quad page that we built, right. uh, if I edge swipe down from the top, I can press in on hold on the first available box, and it will now set our quad page as choice. So I can switch over to a dual screen, and I can then edge swipe down and go back to our quad screen like that. Wow. Makes it very simple. Yeah. So earlier you mentioned when you uh, expanded the chart plotter, um, mm -hmm. you are talking about points. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I know a lot of you, uh, especially the, uh, for you making your, your living on the water, mm -hmm. these points are very important to you. Oh, yes. And so every time you leave the boat, what do we have um, to make them feel, you know, knowing that they're, they're secured and their points um, are saved yeah. on the, the TZ Touch? Waypoints can be a livelihood, and theft is a huge issue, especially in South Florida. So Fruno has, you know, is the first in the industry to come out with a pin code lock. So we can actually put in a pin code and we can lock this display out, you know, just like, just like an iPhone 
or, or any other smartphone mm -hmm. where you can put in a code and it's locked out so nobody can get into it. So to do that, if we go into Home, uh, Settings, I'm going to go here to General and we're going to turn the passcode lock on. So now it's going to ask us to enter in our new password. And it's as simple as one, two, three, four. Well, obviously, you probably don't want to use that password right. since everybody's watching it now knows it. Um, but once we've put in the passcode, when you turn on the unit for the first time, now it's locked out and you have to put in your passcode. If you don't have that passcode, you're not getting in. Right. So a would-be thief that's going to get on the boat and finds out that you've got TZ Touch 3 and knows there's a passcode in it, um, they're less likely to leave a giant gaping hole in your dashboard. And you know, you guys, everybody uses this function every day on your, your, on your iPhone. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the passcode. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty simple. So Clayton, um, about points. Okay. What if you're bouncing around and you actually did a point? Ah, I know you and I have been on some rough seas before. I know we've been tossed around where you can't do anything except hang, hang on to a handrail. So say for example, you accidentally delete a waypoint. So I'm going to make one real quick, just to kind of give you, show you what I'm talking about. So I've made this waypoint right here. So say for example, that was a, that was a mistake. I can simply hit the redo button, and this was something that a lot of people asked for, right. and it will get rid of that accident. Now say for example, uh, that was an accidental delete. I touched on mm -hmm. it by accident, deleted it, and I want to bring it back. I can simply hit the redo button, and it'll put it right back on the screen for us. It's just that easy. Easy as that. Mm -hmm. You know, how can you, you know, that's very, very mm -hmm. easy. It is. Now, I've been showing you guys the UI on, uh, and, you know, functionality on the, on the TZ Touch 3s using the all glass displays. Uh, but let's have Johnny give us a kind of a quick run through of the, the hybrid control on the TZ T12F and on the TZ T9F. Mm -hmm. So on the TZ T9F, it comes with the hybrid control. Mm -hmm. which is nice because now that gives you three options to range in and mm -hmm. range out. So again, on the tzt 12 f and on the 9F, you have that. So yes, you can do the pinch to zoom on whatever display you're on, or you can easily tap on to your range scale to zoom in and zoom out. But again, if you're out there in rough waters and you're bouncing around, it's gonna be hard for you to, to do anything, to do any touching. Mm -hmm. So this is nice where this hybrid control system is actually really nice because it's easy to use. Just put your hand on the dash, mm -hmm. you know, use the roto key. The roto key, and it, it's nice because it feels good and you can just simply just zoom in and zoom out. Mm -hmm. So it's the same layout on both displays, right? Mm -hmm. So just to give you a heads up on the top two buttons are a dual function key. So we have a quick press and a long press. So give me a quick example. If I do a quick press, it's gonna jump me to the home display. Okay. If I do the long press, it automatically jumps to the menu settings. Oh, okay. And on the other side is, if you do a quick press, it's going to drop a point. Mm -hmm. If you do a long press, it's going to drop an MOB. Ah, okay. So, and that's nice because now the TZT9F and also the TZT12F offers that. Mm -hmm. right, so on an all glass unit, such as the, uh, the TZT19F and the 16F, mm -hmm. uh, a customer would want, you know, if they were wanting a keyboard, yeah. what are our options? Um, well, we've got a couple options for that. So we've got the three remotes here that are here out on the dashboard here are the MCU-002, the MCU-004, and the MCU-005. Now, the MCU-002 and the 004, these are both connected via USB. Uh, the MCU-002 uh, gives us the ability to, uh, gives us another form of zoom in and zoom out with the plus and minus keys here. Mm -hmm. And it's connected via USB and it will control the display that is connected to. The MCU-004 uh, is also connected via USB, but it is going to give us the ability to switch control between multiple MFDs in the network. And it also allows us to zoom in and zoom out using the roto key, just like on the TZT. So you have that function now. Yep. And this keypad down here, the last one, the MCU-005, some of you might remember this from the Navnet 3D days. Uh, this is basically the same keypad as the MFD black box. Uh, what's nice is that if you're doing a retrofit between Navnet 3D black box or Navnet 3D system and TZ Touch 3, we can actually save this old keypad and we make a retrofit kit for it. And it also gives us the roto key so that we can zoom in and out on whatever display we're operating. So let's uh, talk about retrofit. So 
when you're retrofitting a Nanit 3D system, and I get this question a lot, and I'm sure Clayton does too, uh, is can I save my radar from my old Nanit 3D and just upgrade to a new TZ Touch 3 display? That question does come up quite a bit. And the answer is yes, you can. So there's a couple things you got to be aware of that you might have to do, such as the software update. Uh, but it is compatible. I mean, so with the older DRS radars, they're all compatible. And the next series is going to be the X class. You know, we offer um, from a four kilowatt up to a 25 kilowatt radar. Mm -hmm. You know, so again, we, there's a whole variety of options right there. Uh, and the next one is going to be the NXT solid solid state Doppler radars. Mm -hmm. So that series is all compatible. Um, and earlier this year, we introduced uh, two brand new ones. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, the first one was a DRS-12A NXT solid state Doppler okay. radar, which is 100 watt. Okay. And then the DRS-25A NXT, which is 200 watt. That's a lot of power. A lot of power. Mm -hmm. It is a lot of power. Mm -hmm. So again, all these radars are fully compatible mm -hmm. with the TZ Touch three MFD displays. And they're they're you know they're available for everyone from you know full time professionals to uh, casual recreational fishermen. Yeah. And talking about fishermen, let's talk about the internal fish finder on the TZT nine F. Mm -hmm. So the TZT nine F has a single channel true echo troop, mm -hmm. which is a little bit different compared to the larger TZT uh, touch three MFD displays, which you know, which has also has a true echo trip as well. You also have the ability to do the standard 50 and 200 kilohertz up to a one kilowatt transducer. So right there, um, if you have an existing Furuno transducer, it's just easy as plug and play. You know, so right there out of the box, you got your GPS plotting. Mm -hmm. Now you have your fish finder, mm -hmm. which is a lot. Straight coming from the box. Mm -hmm. um, and there's multiple uh, network fish finders that are compatible mm -hmm. with the TTT uh, 3 touch MFD displays as well. Mm -hmm. so, and since we're talking about uh, fish finder modules, mm -hmm. uh, Clayton, can you tell the viewers out there uh, what other options do we have? Okay. Um, I would say the first one that we should touch on is the DFF3D, which is the uh, our multi-beam sonar. Right. So the DFF3D is operating, has a beam width of 120 degrees side to side which gives us you know, decent coverage, really good coverage in you know, shallow water and even in deep water. Um, and then it's operating at 165 kilohertz, so it's going to give us good 3D fish imaging in you know, real shallow water, like 10, 15 feet, uh, but also have the power to get down fairly deep, up over 1,000 feet of water. Um, I'm going to give you a quick uh, view of what we can get with the DFF3D. Uh, so we're going to bring that up on the screen here. Now, uh, we've got four different views that we can have. Uh, the first one in the upper left here is the 3D history mode. So the 3D history mode is basically a 3D representation of the uh, ground we've already covered over the top of. Uh, in the upper right, we have the triple beam, which is essentially the left, center, and right beams to kind of give you some uh, spatial awareness as to where things are in the water column. Uh, we have the, uh, down the lower left, we have the cross-sectional view, which is essentially a live view if you slice the water column in half to look at it live. Uh, and then we've got the traditional side scan view. Now, keep in mind that all of these are, this data is not coming from uh, the built-in transducer that you have on the boat. It's coming from a special transducer for the DFF3D. Uh, so you'd have to install that second transducer if you already have one. Uh, the problem is, is that when you do that, you kind of end up you know, sacrificing one because you know, the original transducer is obviously in the best spot on the boat. The DFF3D is going to have to go somewhere else. So to kind of compensate for that, we have what's called a, we offer what's called com uh, uh, basically the accommodation transducer, excuse me. It's a live TV, so I apologize. <laughs> So I brought a, an example for you to show you that combination transducer, now that I can say it right. Um, this transducer is basically two transducers in the same housing. So the lower set of elements here are your high and low frequencies for either chirp or 50 and 200 kilohertz. Um, 
And then we've got the other element set up here on the top is for the DFF3D. So that's giving us our 120 degree wide uh, coverage beam. So this, like I said, it's two transducers in the same housing. Uh, that way they both get installed in the same place. So they're both getting the best, uh, the best of everything. They're, you're not sacrificing anything. Uh, we installed one of these on the 39 foot CV we did for the Furno Connection season one. Uh, and that boat would read at would read excellent imagery at 40 knots, which is nice. You know, having one of these uh, combination transducer mm -hmm. is very nice because you you're basically having the best location mm -hmm. for both function off of one transducer. Yeah, which is really really it. nice. You know, mm -hmm. it's really helpful. But, um, so, if a customer wants to go deep, because you mentioned that the DFF 3D goes. Pretty. Yeah, it's got a good range. Yeah. It'll, you know, it, it'll, it'll cover up to over a thousand feet. Right. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you mentioned that, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, but we want to go s deeper, deeper than that. Like, you know? way deeper. Way deeper. Okay. So if we want to go way deeper. Uh, the op the only, the only option is the DIFF amplifier, which is the deep impact box, and what that is essentially is a uh, two or three kilowatt uh, chirp amplifier. Is what it does. So it's going to take the one kilowatt, you know, either 5200 uh, or uh, chirp output and one kilowatt from your TZ Touch 3 display. And it's going to up, uh, step that up, amplify it to two or three kilowatts. And we also have options to go as much as five or even 10 kilowatts of power for real deep water fish detection. That's a lot of power. I mean, right there out of the box, you have, you can use the internal. Your standard 50 and 200 kilohertz transducer. Yep. Mm -hmm. You can add a DFF 3D for that wide coverage, like mm -hmm. the 120 degree yep. beam, like you mentioned. And now you can go deep with the yeah. DIFF amp. I mean, again, the fish don't stand a chance. No, especially if you run them in tandem. Right. right. Now, the biggest thing with fishing, though, is is getting to your fishing grounds. Right. Right. And weather plays a big part into getting there and the fishing where the fish are going to be, what they're going to do, because weather changes all the time. It changes right? all the time, every day. So we've got a couple options for weather. The first one is Nav Center. So the Nav Center is a forecasted weather service uh, put together of databases from a number of different weather services, including the National Weather Service that handles the high precision model for the U.S. Uh, and it's all downloaded via Wi-Fi, so whether you connect into your marina's Wi-Fi or even use your phone as a hotspot, for example, mm -hmm. Uh, you can download information that comes in as a grid file. It's lightning quick because uh, the file size is small, but it includes a large amount of data, including uh, plankton, sea surface temperature, altimetry, uh, storm information, you name it. And it's the nice thing about it, it, it's worldwide Yep, and it's free. It is. So like Johnny said, if you're anywhere in the globe and you have access to Wi-Fi, you can you know, go to your weather page on your TZ Touch 3, you can you know, zoom out, that's the area that you're going to download, and you can touch on the screen, get latest WX, and it will download the files like that. It's just that quick. Yeah, right. And I like the word free, because yeah. who doesn't like free? Yeah, and it forecasts <laughs> out uh, about 16 days, so about two weeks, uh, which is an excellent amount of data. Uh, but if you're looking for live data, our second option is Sirius XM satellite weather which uses our network uh, BBWX4 uh, black box. Uh, it's a subscription service and it's going to give you live weather information, so lightning, storm counts, now rad, uh, the US uh, weather radar, um, sea surface temperature, you name it. I could go talk for 20 minutes on what it'll do. And the nice <laughs> thing about having that live Mm -hmm. uh, data coming in, it, it refreshes every 30 seconds. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a very quick refresh, so within seconds you've got more data. Yeah. And it's available yeah. across the network, so all these displays will have access to it. And also, if you have the radio subscription through mm -hmm. Sirius, you can change the channel on any of the MFD displays that's ah. in the network. Which okay. makes it very nice. Mm -hmm. So, we talked about the radar sensors, the built-in fish finders, and what's all included, and what's mm -hmm. compatible the system. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some apps that we, we offer. Ah, okay. Yeah, let's dig into apps. So there's three that we've had since the introduction of TZ Touch. Uh, one of them is the remote app, which basically turns your Android or iOS tablet into a miniature MFD. So you can actually control your TZ Touch 3 display from your tablet. 
Uh, we have the controller app, which uh, basically turns your iOS tablet or um, Android tablet into a controller, similar to the uh, MCU controllers. Um, and we also have a viewer app, which allows you to put uh, most of port most of the data from your TZ Touch 3, so position, course, speed, depth, that kind of information into the iPad so you can see it from a different location. Now I know that we have uh, another app that we introduced uh, earlier in the year. Correct? Yeah, so earlier this year at, um, at the mm -hmm. Miami Bow Show, we did introduce a brand new app, which is the TZ First Mate app. All right, so with the TZ First Mate app, it uses that time zero ecosystem, mm -hmm. which just like everything else, everything is in the cloud. So we have all linked and synced through the cloud. Mm -hmm. Such as you know your photos, your points of interest. Okay. You can log your catches, um, and if you if you're logged in and you use and you uh, logged in on your TZ Touch 3 MFD display, mm -hmm. and there everything's synced up in the cloud, you can share points, catches. So so what you're saying is that if you say create a catch, yep. or you know take a picture of a point of interest or save something, it will then sync to the cloud right. and then it will show up on your TZ Touch 3. That is correct. Oh, that's impressive. Let me show you guys a quick mm -hmm. example. So on the phone, mm -hmm. we have the TZ First Mate. Mm -hmm. okay. So what I'm going to do is take a quick picture of Clayton, mm -hmm. since this phone <laughs> is linked with the TZT 19F. He's going to take a picture of me as the catch. <laughs> so he's, he's my catch. Apparently I am. <laughs> so I'm going to take a picture of Clayton. Uh, so we'll, we'll say that Clayton, because it's going to ask... What kind of fish do I look like? You're going to ask what type of species he is. I say Clayton is a barracuda. Okay? Oh. He looks like a barracuda. Oh, okay. Right? Oh, I guess I'll take that. <laughs> and then, so I'm going to name it Tess Clay. Okay. okay. And you can also put the length of it and the weight if you want. Yeah, you can put in quite a bit of information about your catch. That is correct, which I'm not going to. I'm mm -hmm. just going to put it as a Tess Clay. Mm -hmm. And just give it a second and boom. Oh. There it is. So you can see here it's popped up on our on the TZT 19F. So if I touch on it now, if I touch on that catch, there's the picture that that John took, and here's all the information and the title about the catch uh, for each one of these. So all of these are selectable. That's, that was pretty fast. Yeah, too. it was pretty quick. You saw my Barracuda, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> the other app um, that our sister company offers is the TZ iBo. So the TZ iBo is really nice because it bridged that gap from PC navigation mm -hmm. to MFD. And it uses that time zero ecosystem, same exact way, up in the cloud. Mm -hmm. okay? And once you're logged in, you can, on your TZ iBo, which is only compatible on iOS device, you can build a boundary and it will automatically sync and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty instant, they're pretty quick. Yeah, so it's pretty impressive. Now, there's two questions that I know a lot of people are going to ask, right. a lot, and that's how much does it cost and when can we have it? <laughs> All right, so the list price on a TZT9F is at $29.95. Ooh, that's competitive. Very competitive. Mm -hmm. And if you want pricing on the other TZ Touch 3 FFD displays and all the sensors that we mentioned today, you can visit us at FrunoUSA.com or you can ask your Fruno dealer. Mm -hmm. So for delivery, so the order, first of all, ordering, we are taking orders starting today. So right now. Right now. You heard him. We're taking orders right now. Yeah. Call an order one. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to be uh, starting to ship for delivery by the end of this year. Okay, by the end of the year. They're going to go. They're going to be hot, so. Highly recommend it. Start right. putting your orders in now. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we touched base on... The whole TZ Touch 3 product line, um, and we you mentioned uh, the Fruno Connections. Okay, so for the viewers out there who are unfamiliar, what is Fruno Connections? Yeah, so we brought this up. We've mentioned it a couple of times. Uh, Fruno Connections is our uh, Fruno web series. Uh, so season one, we've got two seasons right now. Season one we shot about a year ago, and we did a complete retrofit on a 39 foot CV. We went from Navnet 3D to TZ Touch 2. Uh, Team Fortunate was uh, very kind and let us use their boat uh, to show you uh, the right ways to do a retrofit. Um, season 2 was a rather ambitious project 
uh, where we took TZ Touch 3 with the 4D NXT Radome and the DFF3D, and we put them up against our three major competitors and their comparable systems. And we put them, mounted them on four 30, uh, identical 36-foot uh, yellow fins, and then we took them out on a product shootout in the Florida Keys, and we learned a lot. It was good. I mean, those episodes are very helpful, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Know, especially when you're on the verge of doing a whole retrofit or what to buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And because there's no real consumer reports for marine electronics. There just isn't. So we did it in the most unbiased and fair, where, fair way we possibly could. Uh, and I think we did a really good job. And I think that you know, it really showed that you know, TZ Touch 3 is light years above everything at, that else that's on the market. And I think that everybody will agree once they watch it. So if you guys haven't seen it already, uh, you know, go up and watch it. We've got links on our website, which is frunerusa.com. Uh, you can also find it on our Facebook page and on uh, YouTube, uh, forward slash Marine Electron uh, Fruno Marine Electronics. Uh, and we've got the both seasons up there. I think season two is 23 episodes. And so there's a lot of information. Watch them all. So I think now we're going to switch gears and we're going to go into the uh, live Q&A. So a lot of people, I think, have submitted questions during the broadcast. So our producer, Jeff, is going to give us the first question, and uh, let's get started. Yeah, so the first question here that came in was, can I use the TZT9F with Furuno's DIFF amp, Deep Impact? Okay, so the answer to the question is yes. It will work on all of the TZ3 displays, including the DZT9F. Uh, when it's connected into a network with any of the larger ones, it'll have full access to all the functionality, the setup, the, the visuals, everything. The only thing, um, it doesn't have a connect, a direct connection from the DIFF app to the TZT9F. That's the only thing. Right. So it has to be in a network with another TZ Touch 3. Okay, great. Uh, one of our media buddies posted this question. Okay. He wants to know, what chirp channel or channels does the built-in fish finder use on the TZT9F? Well, it's a single channel chirp, so you have an option between low, medium, or high. Okay. So you can go to our website and they, we have a list of transducers from the low frequency to the medium frequency to the high frequency. Okay. So. Okay, good. Uh, next question. What charts are available for TCT9F in the U.S.? Uh, the Mac Media Vector and Raster charts. Mm -hmm. Also, we included some fishing charts for the East Coast, West Coast, and the Gulf. Mm -hmm. But we also have charts that you can purchase, unlock codes for, such as CMAP, Navionics, or Seymour. Okay. Next question. How can I get, wa how can I get water temperature from my existing NMEA 2000 transducer on my TCT3 display? Very simple. Mm -hmm. Just as long as you have an NMEA 2000 backbone mm -hmm. and you add your TZ Touch 3 MFD as a drop, mm -hmm. they're all going to communicate because it is compatible with NMEA 2000. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do is go into your menu settings mm -hmm. and go to your data source and put your, your uh, what is it, your temp? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To yeah, the smart sensor. The C-surface temperature. Right, yes. Yeah. So we go here to data source and then we can, uh, we can go down here to so uh, C surface, surface temperature is SST. Yes, yeah. uh, SST. It's abbreviated it's for C surface, surface temperature. temperature. So we can go in here and we can set that up for the NMEA 2000 sensor that's in the backbone for temperature. That is correct. Yeah. Okay, great. Next question. Mm -hmm. I have a flush mounted TZT9, which is TZ Touch 1, and I want to remove that unit and replace it with a TZT9F. Will, the, will it be the same size hole? Well, the TZT9F is a little bit bigger than the original TZT9. So when you pull that out, you're going to have to do a little modification, which is going to be about a quarter inch on the width and a quarter inch on the height. And it's not much. It's not much at all. And then right there, you just drop it right in. Okay, this is a question on the Nav Center weather. Uh, we have a question, is that information available for the Caribbean and South America? Well, it is worldwide it data, is worldwide. so yes. yes. Okay. Uh, can the TCT9F be networked with a PC for a larger display? Uh, like, for example, going to like a, like a full-size monitor maybe? So, for example, we've got one of the, uh, the TCT19 right now is put into the monitor. 
Um, so the TZT 9F, if you want, if you if the, let me just answer the question as sure. can you send out video or are you talking about a full capability through the network? Yeah, I guess we need to clarify the question. Uh, I think it's regarding like a, a can it go to a PC, to a black box, something like that for a larger display? No. So, I mean, it's you're so well, if we're talking strictly video, video out, right? There's no video output from the TZT 9F. That is correct. So, connecting into a PC, yes, we could. We could network it in with, like, for example, like Noble Tech Time Zero. Yeah, Time Zero program. But to get the video out, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have video out option. From the yeah. Time, so. Okay. Um, can I set the TZT 9F to show my tracks using water temperature? And if so, what variation can I set for this setting? Uh, so, yes, you can. Uh, there's actually quite a bit of uh, quite a few settings we can do with this, and I'll show you real quick. So if we come in here to settings, and we go down here to ship and track, we can actually adjust the track interval to change depending on a number of different variables. So sea surface temperature is one of them. So we've got uh, seven different colors that we can set for each step that change, um, and the step we can actually set it as much as two degrees or as small as 0.1 degree. So we have quite a bit of flexibility on how tight we can get that, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does the TZT 9F and TZT 3 in general have support for FLIR cameras? Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. So we, we have, actually... We have a list on our website yeah. uh, that we just updated on all the FLIR compatibility, mm -hmm. like a list, um, on which one are, that are compatible mm -hmm. and which one and we do have a large amount of information on setting up a FLIR to work in your TZ Touch 3 network. That's correct, yes. Okay. Uh, here's a little bit more complicated one. Okay. I have an MFD-8 and MFD-12 Navnet 3D on my boat with radar, Navpilot 511, OB, GFF-1, and Sirius XM weather. Can I just replace the displays with TZ T3? Okay. So the answer is yes. Uh, it's not a simple answer as that. It's, this is a little bit more involved. I'll, I'll try to get through this as quickly as I can. So, as Johnny mentioned earlier, the DRS, the older DRS antennas from the Navnet 3Ds are compatible. Uh, it requires a software update and you have to have the right power supply. Uh, the DFF1 sounder is a network fish finder, mm -hmm. so it is compatible. Uh, the Navpilot uh, 500 is a NMEA 0183 device and we have NMEA 0183 out from the TZ Touch 3s, so we still can control the autopilot. Uh, the Sirius Weather uh, is data is compatible, mm -hmm. uh, but there are four boxes that were produced over the years. So the BBWX1 and BBWX2s are not compatible. The BBWX3 and BBWX4 are compatible. That is great. So as long as you have one of those, you should be fine. Okay, so here's, here's a question. Really, I would just like to know, is the TZT9F exactly the same as the other TZT3s except smaller? Yes, it's the same as the 12 inch. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's a couple of things that you know, you got to keep in mind. It's smaller display. It has that same quad-core processor you know, as the 12 inch. Mm -hmm. so oh. It's the same. So they, yes, to answer that quick, yes, it is the same. Okay. And is there video output on TZT3 12-inch? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. there is. There's, a, there's an output port, um, but the input will still be an analog. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we do have, I think it's HDMI out, isn't it? Yeah, HDMI out, mm -hmm. that's correct. Okay, uh, the next question. Can the TZT 9F MFD act as a dedicated engine display for my outboard engine and function as a chart plotter, fish finder, and radar at the same time. Yes, you can. So, if you're looking at it right here, which we made a quad screen, um, it's just as easy as you know doing a two finger touch if you want to control the radar and bring it right back. And if you have engine data coming in via uh, through NMEA 2000, you can go into your instrument page, which is on the corner. You can tap onto it. Okay. And if you tap onto it, you can go and select it for a twin engine, a triple engine, or you can customize it. And the nice thing about this, if you go and make it to a full screen, we already have preset displays. So if you keep swiping, you have your sailing, you have your cruising, you know, a single outboard, a, a, you know, a, a double outboard, a twin outboard, sorry. And these are also um, customizable, so mm -hmm. just by tapping the display, 
and change it to whatever you want. Yeah, and as we talked about earlier uh, with the quick pages, right. you know, we can also set the full screen instruments and the quad page so you can see them all and do a quick change right. between them on the fly as well. That's correct. Okay, here's a question on Deep Impact, the DIFF amp. And the question is, uh, does it only work with TZT3? Or would it work with TZT2 connected to the DFF1 UHD chirp network sounder? Okay, so with TZ Touch 2, the DIFF amp is not connectable. You can't connect it direct to a TZ Touch 2. It can, however, work and display on a TZ Touch 2 if that TZ Touch 2 is in the network with another TZ Touch 3, like a 12, the TZ L12F, uh, the TZ T16F, or the 19F, uh, and they're, con they're connected to the DIFF amp. So theoretically, yes, you can. It just can't connect direct. OK. Uh, can I use the internal chirp sounder in TZ T3, specifically the, the TZ T9F, uh, for bottom discrimination and AccuFish? Well, depending on the transducer. So it, it can do it as long as you have the proper transducer um, that's on the list on our website. We have a list of bottom discrimination transducer. Okay, so if you go to TZT9F, we do have a list. And if you go down that list, if you don't have one of those uh, transducers, mm -hmm. unfortunately you cannot. You know? Yeah. So. It, you know, like, you, like Johnny said, it's all depending on the transducer. So if the existing one is not on the list, it's not going to work with those functions. Excellent. Okay, here's kind of a broad question, but can I upgrade from TZT2 to TZT3? Yes. Of course. Um, like Jeff said, that's a little open-ended. Um, yes, we can. Um, you can also put TZT3 in the network with a TZ Touch 2. Uh, once you've upgraded the TZ Touch 2s to version 7, they'll right. function on the same, same kind of UI structure, right. yeah. And you can also well, yeah, and you could also all yeah, you yeah, yeah, you could you could take the TZ Touch twos out and put all TZ Touch three in in its place. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a question: Can I connect multiple TZT nine Fs with a DRS four D NXT dome and DFF three D? Yeah, of course you can through mm -hmm. the network. All you yeah. need is a network hub, both TZT nine F and on the hub, mm -hmm. DFF three D, DRS uh, yeah DRS four D NXT. And you have full connectivity and control. Yeah, it'd be a very, uh, very capable little network yeah. too. Right? Okay, that looks like that's it for the questions. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Jeff, for the questions. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we want to thank everyone for joining us today for the TZT 9F introduction. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for more of the technology showcase that we're going to be having here near in the future. Mm -hmm. And from all of us here at Furuno, stay healthy and stay safe out on the water.